I like this truck. This is a good truck. It's a very good truck. Hey everybody and welcome to my garage. Today we're going to take a look at my Red Cat Gen 8 V2. So I've had this truck for a little while. It's not a new truck, you can tell. Well, you might not be able to tell from the video. But it is not a new truck. It is definitely scratched up and used. I've had it for about six weeks. So that's not a huge amount of time. Uh, but in that time, it has been well ridden. <laughs> what we're going to do in this video is take a look at this Red Cat Gen 8 V2. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of it. This is not a stock Gen 8. This is heavily modified. Uh, so we're going to take a rundown of the mods that I've done. I'm going to talk to you about some things I like, some things I dislike. And then we're going to talk about some plans in the future because the great ape shall rise. Let's start with the review. Let's take a look at the body. The body is pretty good. So this is the V2. This is not the V1. Uh, it does have the clear windows, which is a big difference between the 1 and the 2 as far as the body goes. This one does come in purple or green metallic. I like the purple, hence the name Grape Ape for this rig. And I have applied a few of the default stickers to this thing. I haven't done a whole lot visually on it. I did have a 3D printed interior in this rig. However, I have taken it out. Uh, I'll tell you why later. We got big plans for this truck and that 3D printed interior is just not gonna cut. Rolling around to the front, it does have an included bumper, uh, which is not bad with some light buckets. I have changed the shackles out to be this red anodized aluminum. Uh, I like those a little bit more. Has a molded front grill, which is kind of nice, and light buckets. And I do have the Red Cat official light kit in this. There are four LEDs in that. I have not put the LEDs in the bumper. I just dislike the way they look. It also has movable mirrors, which is kind of nice. Uh, it has some pretty good stickers. It doesn't have real door handles or a real gas filler or any of that stuff, but that's okay. I can print some and there's a printer behind me with that job's name on it. So we're gonna do that at some point. Uh, let me flip it around to the back so you can see. Uh, it does have more shackles back here, which I have also swapped with anodized aluminum shackles. Another set of light buckets, which I am not using. Uh, a full tail light set, which is really nice. There are three lights per bucket. And since I am using the official Red Cat light kit, they actually function. So when I you know, let go, the brake light comes on. When I reverse, the reverse light comes on. Uh, all that good stuff, it has a running light as well. It's really nice. And there is also a trailer hitch down here with a hitch pin. Cool addition, I plan on at some point running a trailer on this thing. Also, I have replaced the tires and wheels on this. Uh, it does come factory with a set of plastic bead locks and some Interco Super Swampers, which I have moved off to my daughter's Red Cat Gen 8. Instead, I have the Proline Hyrax in the G8 compound running on Incision Machetes from Vanquish Products. I really like these wheels, I really like these tires, they're very capable. I'm also running the stock foams in this, which are pretty squishy. Uh, the stock foams are soft. I like it that way, I'm a big fan of soft foams. That's basically it for the outside. I haven't done a whole lot to this thing outside. Um, it is pretty scratched up, but that's okay, right? That's what they're supposed to get, is scratched up. Well, let's take this top off, which is another cool feature, and I'll show you underneath. The top is actually held on, instead of body pins, it is held on with Velcro, which is pretty handy. See, it comes off. I am gonna, at some point, replace that with magnets, but again, we'll talk about that project here in a little bit. So now that we've got the top off, you can see some stuff that I have done in here. I have replaced the ESC with the Hobbywing 1080, ESC, a brushed ESC, it's really nice. It does come with an XT60 connector, but I've converted that to Deans as all my batteries are Deans. I have replaced the stock motor with a 10-turn Crawlmaster from Holmes Hobbies. So that is a five-slot motor, which gives me a little bit better low-end response. 10-turn uh, is a, a you know pretty fairly low wind for that five-slot armature, but I am also running a 13-tooth pinion gear against the stock spur so I'm geared down pretty heavily right there and it does have a significant amount of torque and low end this thing can creep and crawl very very well so as far as the radio I have swapped that out as well from the stock radio to my radio link 
RC4GS. I do like this radio. It is a budget radio. It is not super expensive, but I, I really like it. Uh, so it does take double A's. You can swap that out with a LiPo pack, which I intend to. Uh, it has an LCD screen and memory for up to 10 models. So I do actually have a couple of models on this thing. It's really nice. Uh, and I have printed my own thumb drive, which is a pretty cool print. If anybody out there has this RC4GS and you want this, uh, I will link it in the description from Thingiverse. Go print you one. It is super handy. I've also swapped the stock servo, which was a 25 kilogram hex fly, with this 35 kilogram DS servo from Amazon. It is really cheap. Uh, I think it was somewhere like $35 for this servo. It equates to about 400 ounce inches, which is pretty high. I don't know how much of that is actual, you know, actuality. Uh, but I have had a lot of luck with it. It's been a really good servo. It can push this truck around, which is significantly heavier than stock. This thing weighs about 10 pounds, and that servo can push it around when it's bound up in a corner. Uh, so happy with it so far. We'll see what the longevity looks like but it was a pretty good budget purchase. I'm pretty pleased with that. If you want to pick one of those up, I'll also link that in the description. Along with all the other components I'm telling you about, I will put links to all of this in the description. If you're interested in putting some of this on your rig, go there, check it out. Uh, definitely pick up some of this stuff. I highly recommend all of it. Since we have it upright, I'll start with the mechanicals and we'll start with shocks. So I have replaced those. They were big bore aluminum body shocks, which there's nothing wrong with those but I wanted dual rate. So I went to Amazon and I actually picked up a cheap knockoff set. These are something similar to what RC four wheel drive has, but they're kind of a cheapy knockoff. Uh, they have not leaked. They are all aluminum construction. They are dual rate and they are emulsion shocks. Uh, I am pretty pleased and I am running 35 weight team low C shock oil in those. So on the drivetrain, some things that I have done, I have replaced the steering links with the club five Husky links. Uh, I have left the regular four link links alone, uh, but really what I wanted to do was replace the, the front tie rod and the pan hard bar, which that Husky link set came with. I'm very pleased with it. Uh, I've also put a bunch of treal brass around this thing. As you can tell, there is brass in all four corners. So all the portal housings are solid brass. The C hubs in the front are brass and the portal housings in the back are brass. A bunch of brass on this rig so it does weigh quite a bit like i was saying this is about a 10 pound rig it's pretty hefty uh, i have not done anything with the rest of the drivetrain so the drive shafts the transfer case the transmission are all stock gearing stock housings i do have plans to put aluminum housings but i will probably leave the stock drive shafts because i'd rather pop one of these than a gear in the transmission or, or transfer case uh, so that's probably going to get left alone, but they've got some decent scrapes. They've had some good wear and tear and everything has held together really, really well. Um, the next mod that I'm doing immediately is overdrive in the front. So I have a trio steel gear set coming to do 12% overdrive in the front differential. That should be here pretty soon. I'll do a video on that. So check out the channel to see that get installed and a little bit about it. Uh, but other than that, that is my Gen 8. It is not factory stock. There are a lot of differences between this and stock. This is a heavily modified rig, but it is incredibly capable. Now, if we're talking about a stock Gen 8 V2, it's still very capable. If you're on the fence about buying one of those for the price point of $299, as I said today, that's what it is, uh, you should just get off the fence and purchase it because there's no reason not to put one of these in your collection. You'll probably want to do a few things, maybe a motor upgrade, um, you know, maybe a new servo, Definitely some wheels and tires. The Interco Super Swampers are okay, but they're not great. It really depends on your terrain. In my terrain, these high racks are much better. Uh, but if you're on the fence about it, just get off the fence and buy one. There's no reason not to buy one of these. Moving right along, now that we have talked about it, I want to talk about some plans for it. So this video is going to kick off a series called The Grape Ape Rises, because this truck, the Grape Ape, is about to get some massive scale overhauls. Uh, I have a lot of plans in the works. Some of it requires metal fabrication, which I've already started. Uh, there's going to be some styrene scratch building, which again, I've already started. A lot of what we're going to do is focused around the scale aspects that this truck can bring. Now this is a Lexan bodied truck. I'm going to go with factory body. I'm not going to put a hard body or some other thing on it. I really like the Scout. Uh, so I'm going to go with that and we're going to scale it out. It's going to be a really great scale rig. 
Uh, and as we go, I'm going to keep up with the Sorka points that I'd be getting for all those scale changes and uh, see what we can get this thing to top out at. I really want to see what a class 2 Sorka might look like for this rig if you just tried to point that sucker out. Uh, so we're definitely going to work on that. A couple of things I'm definitely doing, we are making new bumpers from scratch. So I'm welding those up as we speak. I am doing a whole interior out of styrene. I've got that started. In fact, it's right here. I'll give you a little sneak peek in my styrene interior. There you go. So I have, I have uh, built this interior to sit right in there. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to do all kinds of stuff to scale this thing out. So definitely subscribe and keep an eye on it because we're going to be doing a lot of work to this rig. This is not going to be your average Gen 8 when we're done. Man, I love squishing this thing. So I will link all the parts that I have put on my Gen 8 in the video description below. I will tell you the best place if you're buying Red Cat parts to go buy Red Cat parts is TeamRedCatShop.com. They have hooked me up several times. Those guys are great over there. Um, all of my factory Red Cat parts for this rig and my other Gen 8 have come from there. They have great shipping, great prices, and all the same stock you can get from the official Red Cat website. In fact, I have a whole box full of stuff coming for this thing. Hopefully this week, uh, we're gonna get a new body, we're gonna paint that thing, we're gonna do all kinds of fun stuff with all the parts I have coming. So definitely, like I said, keep an eye out on the channel. That stuff is gonna be a whole lot of fun. Definitely let me know in the comments what you think I should do scale-wise for this thing. Like I said, I have a few ideas already. We're gonna do bumpers, we're gonna do a scale interior, we're gonna do a pretty epic paint job. I may even fabricate some sliders for this thing out of the same steel that I'm using for the bumpers. But let me know. I really wanna get your ideas about things that might be in the back of the scale interior or go on the outside, all kinds of cool stuff. Let me know what you guys think. I'd love to put some of your ideas into this rig. Definitely want to check those out. And leave a comment below. I'll write everybody back who does. I really enjoy reading those. And I appreciate your time for doing so. And that's going to be it for this stage of the Great Eight Rises. Which is basically just a small review and some preliminary stuff. Before we get really started on the hard work. Uh, so like I said, subscribe. Check these videos out. There's going to be more coming in the future. But thanks again for watching, and until next time, we will catch you later. I believe it deserves its dignity. I shall put the body back on.